Hi, everybody. It's Dee Slater with Create with Dee. Welcome to Wednesday Night Stamping here. I'm so happy um, that you're going to be here. And if nothing else, that you'll be able to um, watch the replay and see this fun project that I have in store for you today. So as always, as you come on, please say hi and um, let me know that you're here and I'll try to look over at the comments and you know say hi to people as you come in and say hi to me and answer some questions. I apologize for having gum in my mouth. Um, I'm kind of getting over a little sinusy thing this, um, this past week and this will help keep my voice from cracking so much. Okay, let's get started with this cute project that I have for you tonight. All right, I am kind of a little bit obsessed with this project. This is such a cute little bag that can be a bag, um, even a box, or even a little purse. All from the same layout. It's just however you might choose to design it. So can't wait to share it with you. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna keep this little one out here. Oh, and I have to show you this. Um, of course, we're going to, I mean, you probably have guessed that we're going to be using Turtle Friends. And um, this one says Forever Friends on it. One of the stamp sets or one of the sentiments from the stamp set I'm going to be getting with some girlfriends here um, in a week. And I thought this is going to be cute here. And then when they open it up, this is the version that they're going to get. I found these little turtle bites. I found these at our local Kroger, which believe me, Kroger is not <laughs> the place to get this. You know, probably some of the most expensive candy, but they had them. I got two bags of them. They had just the two bags and, um, but they're just so cute. These little turtle bites, the famous turtle candies. Um, and you know, I'll share with you here in a little bit, how many in each that you can get. But I think just such a cute little gift, and I hope that you enjoy it. Okay. Well, um, if you um, are on what on my Facebook, because this will be uploaded to YouTube um, as well, I wanted to share how you can make three of these um, basic boxes or bags, however you might want to look at them. You can get three of them out of one sheet of your 12 by 12, which means that one pack, you can get 36. So if you're doing a party and you have a theme of the designer paper that would work, you know, you can get 36 little treat bags out of one pack of paper. So I'm going to give you some tips on how um, this works or how I did it anyways. So here is, hope you can see this all, but here was my 12 by 12. If I want to get three bags out of it, what I want to do first is like determine the orientation. And this one has the paper going you know, in this direction. Your first cut is go ahead and cut off one inch or let's see here, actually an inch and a half. Oh, I've got to do this again. I think I've got, I did. So this is um, an inch and a half. Do as I say, not as I do, right? Um, so an inch and a half. And keep this, this will be used later on. And then turn your paper and cut it every four inches. That way you're going to end up with three of these. So we do need to start out with a, um, like the box itself is made from a four by 10 and a half. I'm gonna go trim a half an inch off of this one real quickly. And just a couple of quick um, score lines is all we need on it. So as you come in, if you want to say hi, that would be great. I'm not seeing any comments just yet. Um, sometimes I know there is a little delay on it. Okay, so um, you can use your um, paper trimmer and use your scoring blade on that, your score. I'm going to use the Simply Scored scoring tool. I can just do it a lot faster on, um, on the video for this. We're going to score it at one inch, five and a fourth, six and a fourth, and at ten and a half. Well, see, 11 was right. Okay. Oh my gosh. I saw the ten and a half and I thought that was goofy. Okay. We're cutting it. 
<laughs> four by 11. Okay. I was right. See, I knew I was right. Darn it. Okay. Do it again. Um, replay. Rewind. <laughs> One, five and a fourth, six and a fourth, and 10 and a half. There was my measurement that I had seen with the 10 and a half. Now what we want to do is we're going to turn it on the short edge and whatever's going to be the bottom of your box, put it over here at the one inch side. So again, the orientation of your paper is going from left to right. So this will be the top and we're going to score it at one. All right, so we'll get that put off to the side for now. And we're going to get our paper snips. And let's go ahead and we'll do some bone folding. We'll get some crisp edges on this so that you can see this, the score lines here. So I'm going to go ahead and get those score lines. And we'll see which side of the paper we can see here. Very good. And one more. There we go. That was kind of hard to see with the pattern paper. We'll do it on the green side here so that we can see it. And then fold this back. I love this tropical paper. I think it's so cute. We'll make the, the bags or the boxes here first. And then if you want to stay for decorating, that would be awesome. All right. So what I'm going to do is this is the where it's at 10 and a half. I am going to, um, I'm going to show this side of it. I'm going to take this little corner out. Well, that was like a bad pattern to pick. Let me just, I want to do it on the front side. Okay, we're going to take out this little corner section here. Again, this was scored at the 10 and a half. We'll take out the bottom section here. And then this is going to be our tab. And so let's go ahead and angle cut that. Okay. And then from there, we're going to go ahead and make our tabs on the bottom. And so and this time I'm going to turn it over. And we'll go ahead and cut just right along the score line. And if you want, you can taper those. I'm, you know, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. For this little project, you know, I found I didn't really need to, so um, I'm not going to. All right. So again, this is going to be the front side. So I'm going to work on the back side here. And you can use um, fast view, or not fast views, that was the old one. You could use um, tear and tape. You can use stamp and seal plus. And let me just see, I haven't used that much with you guys. Let's see, why don't we use that? You could use your multi-purpose glue, but I'm just gonna go ahead and um, use this. This is the tab and we are going to fold this over. Whoops, like so. Why am I such a hot mess? I did that on the wrong side. Oh, forevermore. I'm going to start over. I'm going to blame it on my cold pills. Okay, let's do this again real quickly. Oh my goodness. One inch, five and a quarter, six and a quarter, and 10 and a half. Turn and at one inch. Good land the mighty. Get those going. And we'll score this up again. Oops. Get this scored a little better here on that one inch. I didn't press it quite enough to make that. There we go. Okay, let's do this again. We're going to take out this little corner here. At the ten and a half, angle cut, angle cut, come up. Okay. 
you know, I, um, with doing all of these lives, there is no retake, you know, you're just like kind of one and done on it. It's kind of crazy. All right. So I'm going to put, I'm going to close my tab down and I'm going to make, put my, um, stamp and seal plus there. Hi, Linda. Hi, Marcy. Hi, Lori. Thanks for joining. Oops. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, I turned the tab down, and then I'm going to line this up to the edge and press down. Okay, so now when we open it up, we've got something that looks like this. And um, for the tabs, what I like to do is fold one of these back. And this is, I, we just need adhesive on one of the larger, longer strips here. So I just kind of move all of these tabs out of the road. And while it's flat, just kind of give it a little bit of adhesive. This isn't going to hold anything stronger than the candy, so I'm not worried about it being super strong. And we'll go ahead and fold in. The inside tabs, the short tabs, one of the long tabs, and then the one with adhesive goes on the very edge. And that's it. It was a lot simpler than what I made it out to be when I had that beef one. Oh, and look, I did the scoring on the wrong side. Okay, this is, I'm going to grab one of those. So that's what that looks like. And then here's the right one. <laughs> So you make all of these exactly the same way. We're going to use this one because, you know, it's right side up. Okay, so from this little box here, it's a bag, it's a box, it can be whatever you'd like it to be. Um, so again, you fill up what you'd like to do. And then if you have these little binder clips, these are some clips that Stampin' Up! had several years ago, and I got a bunch of them when they went on the clearance rack, but you can use mini binder clips. All you need to do for this one, like a really basic one, is just kind of pinch in the sides and then put your binder clip on it. And there would be one little bag just like that. But we're going to zhuzh it up just a little bit by putting on a flap. Again, this is down and dirty. You can go um, really quickly with a bag like this. But if you want to dress it up, um, that's what we're going to do here tonight. So ahead of time, um, what I've done is I've die cut, well, like I said, I'm going to be making several of these, but out of basic black, I die cut um, this shape out of scallop contours. And all we're going to do on this, again, I'm making it as simple on myself as I can. I'm just going to literally fold it in half the long way. So I'm going to line up the scallops. and take our bone folder or you could finger press and have that. So now you have this little tent look. And what we're going to do is put adhesive on the back side of it and then close it up. So for this, I think, you know, I am gonna use my liquid glue and I'm not going to um, get around the the scallops, I'm going to stay within the stitched area there just because it's just a little larger than the back side of it, and I don't want the glue to be sticking out. So we'll get this. I'm going to kind of reposition myself here just a little bit. So if you want, you can pinch it or you can just line up this edge with the score line. Again, we've got some wiggle room there. I kind of like to pinch it down so that you can line it up a little bit. Again, there'll just be a little bit um, on either side of it, or a little bit of the scallop showing on either side, and then fold down. And then just give that a good press. And then when you open it up, there you go. You have your little pouch. And so again, here you can just grab a binder clip um, or something that you want to close it. Maybe you'd have a fancy little paper clip or whatever. Um, but even those office um, black binder clips are super cute on a project like this. 
So if you wanted to leave this blank like this, you could, but we're gonna decorate the front of it. And then it's the same decoration on all of the different versions that we're going to do tonight. Ahead of time, what I've done is I die cut some layering circles um, dies. I'm using the scallops. This is just jade as well as calypso coral. So, you know, just pick out some of the, um, the colors and whatever designer paper that you're using. And I'm going to get those two colors. And I kind of like the just jade. That's going to be a uh, soon to be retiring color. And so um, it's one of the colors that are in this designer paper, the artistic or artfully composed designer paper. And um, I'm getting another um, circle from the layering circle dies for it too. And let's see here, the measurements on these two that I'm using for this one, the scallop is about two and a half. And then the layering piece on the inside looks to be the two and an eighth. All right, let's get some stamping done. Bringing in the images here from, again, Turtle Friends. I mean, I just, as soon as I had seen this little turtle friend, this was in the annual catalog. And I'm like, well, who doesn't need a little turtle punch in their life? So again, for this one, this is going to some friends. I'm going to pick up that black that we're going to use for the you know, for the topper as well as from the inside of the of the designer paper. This is tuxedo black ink. And I'm going to stamp this relatively high on the circle. And we'll get rid of that one. And then um, this has, this paper here has some of the black hearts. It's got, you know, the um, the Calypso Coral. And so let's see here. I think on this one, let's bring in, I have used um, the Bumblebee on this one, but this doesn't have any Bumblebee ink here. So let me grab my Calypso Coral and we'll use that. So here's a little heart stamp that's part of that Turtle Friends. And what I do guys on these smaller stamps is I pick up the ink in the corner because, you know, on those larger stamps that we have, um, you can even see that a lot of the ink is used up in the, in the middle. So on these small ones, grab your ink from the side. And let's see here, I'm gonna kind of frame the Forever Friends so it's on either side of it and then just kind of cascade down just a little. And you can fill all of that up, but our little turtle guy is going to be right there. All right, so to make the turtle, you can use any brown tones that you want. Um, I'm using crumb cake here tonight, and I'm going to do the turtle outline with early espresso. Let me get my little heart out of the road. So I'm going to get my turtle outline. If you wanted to, you could stamp this um, with, again, the Memento ink and use your Stampin' Blends and really color it. Um, but I'm making so many of them that um, I'm going to use just the Stampin' Punch for it. And then this lines up. And then we punch her cute little turtle image out. So cute. Very, very cute. And then to make the shell, I'm going to stamp tone on tone. I'm going to use um, the, um, the Just Jade, but I do want to go ahead. Whoops, I put this way a little too soon here. Is that what? Oh, no. I'm going to clean my turtle here first. Let me get that stamped off just a couple of times. Make sure I get all of that brown out of there because I do want the outline. Okay, so clean your stamp, not just stamp off, but my cleaning mat is out of reach. And I'm going to ink up my turtle on the Just Jade ink. 
and I'm just going to be cutting out the, um, the shell image so I can stamp low on my pad. In the um, stamp set, you get this cute little shell image that layers on top of it. And so we'll ink that up and stamp that right on top of it. Put that off to the side. We'll get our punch back out. And we'll line up and get the shell. Now, you may have noticed on my sample here that it's like, oh, gosh, you know, there isn't a punch for that. Or, you know, there wasn't a shape. And, you know, you're absolutely right. All I did was just take my paper snips and just come along the outside of the shell and just kind of fussy cut around it. And then we'll get our turtle guy or girl back in here and I'll get a Stampin' Dimensional. And we'll put this back on. And I have a little Wink of Stella action going here. It's a little shiny on it. And go ahead and tongue in cheek saying I'm going to shellac <laughs> his shell <laughs> or her shell. Give it a little sparkle on it. All right. So let's get um, the turtle on here. I'm going to put one dimensional. And then position our turtle where we want it. Put some liquid glue on the back of that. Layer it onto our Just Jade scallop. Bring in our little box that we made earlier. And, you know, you can use liquid glue or dimensional. We can just put a dimensional on it. And then we can... Remember that we've got the binder clip on here. And then I also took some of this um, black and white gingham ribbon and make a little bow. That'll just kind of zhuzh it up just a little bit. And we'll get a glue dot. and put it on here. We won't go up through all of the decorating with all of the other layouts um, that we're gonna do here tonight. But I did wanna show you how I made um, like the overall look of one with the turtle. That little ribbon just makes it, doesn't it? And then when you open it up, you can put some little treats in it. Let's get our turtle bites. And I found if you close it up that you can get Two of these turtle bites in without it being too bulky so you might be able to get three of them in and there's that one okay so this is version one and i hope you like that i thought it was super cute so now let's take this version and we'll make it more of a boxy look all right so let me grab one of the other ones that i have done ahead of time again it's the same box and it's the same black scallop size. This time, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, you could use your trimmer. I'm gonna bring in my scoring tool again. I'm just gonna kind of move everything off to the side. And what I wanna do is count in three scallops from either direction. And so you just want to go like one, two, three, and it doesn't matter where on your scoring, like on if you have the scoring tool, it doesn't matter because you're just counting in three scallops. Find a line or if you're on your trimmer, um, put, put it in between your score blade and score. Same thing on the other side. One, two, three. Kind of line it up. Find a 
a notch, have three on that side, and score. So I thought that made it pretty easy if we counted scallops on that. So just like before, let's get our bone folder. Let's make it a really crisp edge. Now on this one, we're going to do the same thing as we did before. We're just going to put adhesive on that back panel. So let's use liquid glue. And you could use all of the other glues that are really strong. Um, just the liquid glue always gives you that wiggle room. And just like before, we're going to put it on the back side. So I'm kind of looking at this, lining it up to the score line, and then you can kind of do a quick check. Okay, that looks good. Um, and then if you want to, like I kind of took this and just to pinch it in just a smidge, just kind of to get it so it bends in just a little bit. All right, so then that um, holds it here. And what I did for this one is I made the turtle and I used the dimensionals as kind of a little stopper in the back of it. So let's, um, let's do that. I won't do the whole design. I'll just show you, um, you know, what it would look like. So just pretend we have it all decorated just like we did before. This time, what we're going to do is close the lid and right underneath where the scallop is, that's where we want to put our dimensionals because this is going to act as the stopper. And actually, I want it to go up a little closer because it almost has to catch. It almost be there. Okay, so see how that, like it's, it's kind of, I'm tucking it a little bit under the dimensional. So I don't want to have it necessarily stick to it, but it's got to be close enough on there that it kind of catches it and wants to stay in. Okay, so then let me go ahead and do this real quick, just so that you can kind of get the perception of it. So I have one that's already starting to be stamped. And then we'll bring that up and center it. And then lift up your flap and kind of, and then really press it down with the dimensions. Whoops, didn't give that time to dry. So then when you're ready um, to fill it with your treats again, then your embellishment acts as a stopper for your box. And then you get that. Okay, so that's way number two. So now instead of a bag, you have more of a box. And on this one, I kind of, because it's not pinched, you can easily get three, maybe four of the turtle bites in there. All right, one more to go. Let me grab another one of my samples. I just have to show you guys, like, here's how many that I'm making. I've made, whoops, <laughs> I've got like several, several sheets of these all made up. All right, so let's see here. So this is um, the one inch strip that I have and let's get a box that matches. Okay, so um, on this one, this is how I thought, what am I gonna do with this one strip, one inch strip? I'm like, well, let's just make a handle on that. Hi, Rita. Hi, Linda. Hi, Doreen. I'm just checking. Hi. Thanks for joining. So um, we have this one inch strip. So this is the one inch by 12 that I said, you know, cut the long side off um, first. And, you know, if you want to, you can do what I did there and curl the handle. And quite honestly, I'm not even going to cut it, you know, because I can tuck it down for as long as I want it to be. But I'm going to use my Stampin' Seal Plus on this one. On this, I would recommend the Seal Plus or the Tear and Tape. Get this down. And then, again, don't even measure because no one's going to see the inside of the 
of your bag. Just kind of, I just pressed it down and looped it up. And then here's where you can adjust whatever height that you want. And that looks good. And I'm going to get my bone folder and get some good contact and go like this. Um, let's see, I think on one of these, just this one, I'm peeking at one of my, I'm going to take out some of my goodies here. Um, if you wanted to, um, and I'm going to put this on the instructions too, you could make a, out of cardstock a one inch by four piece of um, cardstock and a coordinating color. You can use black or anything. And you can put it down there if you have something that you want it, this to be a little more sturdy. Just add a little card st cardstock strip to the inside of that. So um, again, this is going to be the exact same thing that we did before with the box, only that it's got a handle. So let me bring in my scoring tool one more time. Again, you can use however you'd like to score. And same as before, we're counting in one, two, three scallops. Find something that you can go in between those scallops and score. One, two, three from the end. Line her up. And score from the other side. And we'll do this. Crisp edges. All of these are exactly the same as far as putting these together. You know, we're just going to add glue on the back panel. And now let's bring this one in. And I did want to put my handle on first because I can kind of zhuzh my way around it because then the topper is nice and snug. Okay, so you see how I kind of did that? I kind of put that in and then again I'm going to get my it's a little I got a little gluey on that but I want good contact and then bring it back in so that's how I did to put a little handle on it if you make it a little longer like this you could almost like call it a little Easter basket all right so on this one um, you could go ahead and do the same type of closure as what we did here, but I wanted to show you a, another way of doing it, and that is using um, little magnetic, um, you know, using the magnets. Um, I just get these on Amazon, and I try to keep them together until I'm ready. And I like using my glue dots for this. So again, it's like I'm going to take what will be my my sample here I'd have this all decorated up and let's see on this one what I found is I do want the magnet to be um, on this one I had the magnet a little lower on it but it was actually kind of pulling my sentiment off a little bit and so on this one let's put the mag let's put the magnetic on the flap itself so to do that I'm going to grab the top magnet, put the glue dot on the back side of it, and this is going to be, I guess, right here. Take my companion magnet. Pull it off. Come on now. And I've done this so many times that I like to go ahead and stick it magnet to magnet on it so I know that it's on the right, the correct side of it. Going to have another little um, piece of glue dot and hold it down. That way it's going to match exactly where I want it to. And when I pick this up, then I have the magnets on either side of it. And so now I know when it closes, it's going to be perfect. What um, you can do next is, 
depending on the size of your magnets that you use, again, Amazon, um, any office supply store. Um, I have a retired, um, I think this is a quarter inch punch. You could use um, like just a regular hole punch. Might be just a little bit larger than that, but I like getting two of these and just have a little cover for our magnets just so that, you know, they're not naked there on our project. And you can grab another glue dot and we'll cover that. It's not gonna affect the magnet at all by having those covered. And then we'll do one on this side. And now when we put our little purse down, that flap stays in. And then we decorate our turtle just as before and it can be up on the top here. And, you know, it would look like this. So that is one box or one bag made three ways. Here, let's bring in our samples again. So you can make a cute little purse or bag or basket, whatever you might want to call this. Um, and you can use a magnet to keep it closed or you can use it as just a box with no handle and use it as a little tuck-in mechanism to keep the lid closed. Or just simply pinch the tops together, use a binder clip, and have your little turtles. So forever friends with turtles, we have our little turtle bite candies to coordinate with it. And um, that's our project here for this Wednesday. Um, you'll see the instructions on the video um, as far as the measurements and everything. And I hope you enjoyed this project. All right, I'll go back through and read the comments. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great Wednesday night. Happy crafting. Bye-bye.